And welcome to another edition of Throwing Bagels. Kevin Mooney here alongside Chris Douglas. Hi, Chris. Hey, Kevin. How's it going? Hey, I good. How are you? Doing excellent. And Jason Hamo here with us as well. Hey, Jason. Hello. How's everything going, guys? Hey. Good. Very good. Very good. You know, uh, so yes, the three of us, as as you know, the listener, as you're listening to us, you know that we're Oswego grads, right? Uh, but we're not, we weren't here. We weren't in Oswego during the summers, right? Cause we were back home doing, doing whatever. So, uh, but because of that, we missed out on some, on some pretty good things uh, going out at Oswego uh, while uh, during the summer months. And we're going to talk about one of those uh, right now and uh, joining us on the program, another fantastic guest. Uh, he is the executive director of Harbor Fest uh, in Oswego. It's Dan Harrington. Dan, thank you so much for joining us. No problem. Glad to do it. Dan, this is your your first year as executive director of Harbor Fest, but you're certainly no stranger to Harbor Fest, are you? No, I, I've been doing it for like 15 years now. What really attracted you to taking the executive director position? A little bit of history. When I started, uh, my wife was doing it for quite a few years before myself and the uh, during the same time Harbor Fest was happening, I'd be uh, going out of town for racing, helping a local guy here. But then one year I decided not to go and I helped my wife. Uh, we were actually uh, on the trolleys, what they called the trolleys at the time, go around the swiggle and take people from all over, you know, east side, west side, and vice versa. I liked that. And so I started doing it. And then after a few years doing that, uh, I see they needed more help in setting up for Harbor Fest, which takes two weeks before the actual festival. So I got on the logistics and I've been doing that. And I've been, uh, I got on the board of directors. And after this past year, when, well, last November, Pete Miles, who, who was a director for five years, he got tied up doing more stuff with, uh, he's like the uh, principal of Trinity Catholic. And he just couldn't spend the time between the two jobs. So he resigned and, uh, the president of the board asked me, he says, would you be interested? And I said, sure. So they said, well, okay, you got it. And here I am. Do you have a, like a specific term as being the executive director? Is it last a certain amount of years or? No, there's nothing in the bylaws as far as the director. Normally the directors, uh, they go for a while and they say they've had enough and they get out. So <laughs> that's how long the terms are. <laughs> I don't think anybody's been in for more than five years that I know of. Hmm. What are some of the obstacles in organizing such a large multi-day event? Well, we have, <clears throat> back when Harbor Fest was really big, when they did track like, uh, oh, maybe like two or 300,000 people a summer, they had a staff, they had a lot of money to deal with. Uh, now we're attracting maybe like 75,000 people a year. And, you know, we reduced the staff down. We have a real small paid volunteer staff. And uh, that was one of the obstacles. And the other obstacle, I think, just uh, just trying to uh, go out and get all the money to you know to run the festival like to have fireworks to have you know to have entertainment you know what have you that's the hardest part is trying to get the get the funds to keep the thing going and and how how are you able to get those funds so what 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 are the means of of uh, that financial backing well most of the financial backing the sponsors we have have been doing it for years and. You know, they're, they're staying on. Most of the people that, you know, have stayed on. A lot of the people are giving them more money. Like uh, a good example is like the fireworks that we have are put on by the biggest, which are well known. And this year's fireworks yeah. is uh, running at $115,000. And wow. we have one sole sponsor this year, which is Pathfinder Bank in Oswego, which, mm. you know, which is great. Then you have the other businesses in the areas that, you know, they all kick in and a lot of the small businesses, you know, even if they give three hundred thousand dollars, what have you, and uh, or donate something, it, it, it helps out tremendously. What well, is is music another major? I would imagine that's another major expense for Harbor Fest every year. Oh yeah, we uh, yeah. we have a program committee that starts out really in September, right after Harbor Fest ends, and uh, they send out for. Uh, you know, people, you know, audition or interview saying, would you like to do it? Or, you know, what, what can you give us to offer? And uh, last year we didn't, you know, after COVID, after being down for two years, we didn't have Harvard Fest for two years. Mm. We didn't have very much money to start up on. We stayed with a lot of the local bands 
where this mm -hmm. year we've been able to go out and get some better bands. Like in fact, uh, the the major attraction this year is the Guess Who. So I think it'll be a it'll be a good year. And how do you determine or um, which bands are going to be invited to play uh, during Harbor Fest? Oh, the program committee after they listen to whatever the bands send in. You know, we try to hit different music for all different uh, ages of people and what people like. so that's uh that's how they determine what they're going to have whether they're going to have country or rock and roll or you know uh hard rock we try to pick a little bit of everything this is one of the the largest admission free music festivals in the state isn't it yes it is it's probably wow. the only one admission free in the state it's that that's a good point because you look at you know other other venues and you know there's there's certainly a lot of you know, musical festivals that take place across upstate New York and the state in general. But yeah, you're really not going to find uh, something like as big as Harbor Fest to be able to attend that at no, you know, at no charge. So that that's that's a fantastic deal, you know, for a yeah, good example of that yeah. this year, the guess who that's going to be here in a swiggle on Friday night, the following night, they're going to be down at uh, Cupid Lake. There's a new center that opened down there. Uh, they call it a concert on the bluffs. So what they're playing there, and it's I think it's a hundred dollars minimum to get in. Wow, mm. wow! And are they they're a, they're a strictly who cover band, or do they play other music? No, they play other music. Who have you? Who's been the most memorable performer over the past the uh, past uh, years that you've seen there? Oh boy, uh, I'm trying to think now. There's been all sorts of bands that I've liked. I mean, I'm a you know I'm six years old. Like I like <laughs> the rock and roll you know, back in the the Beatles days and stuff like that, but. Uh, we've had Frankie Valley. Uh, I like him. There, there's tons of bands. I just can't think of them on right now. But over the years, we've probably had up to a couple hundred different bands. Yeah, I know during the during the festival, it's over in the park. You know, they're they're you have a huge stage set up. Well, we figured we got the the main stage being in Brightbeck Park this mm -hmm. year, being sponsored by Constellation. But then uh, I don't know if you guys when you. Going to school there, if we had if they had the veteran stage down on the river on the west side of the river, there's another stage there which we have local bands uh, playing like Frostbit stuff like that. Mm. And over in the east part, that's what we call mainly our jazz and blues stage. Is Frostbit blues still around? Yeah, it's still, still playing. Yes, it is. That is a still popular, real popular <laughs> band. Nice. Wow. Who knew? All these years later, that's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, amazing. What was that's the good. other what was the other band guys that used to play a lot? Do you remember, Chris? There was another really big band. And I, I think they played Harbor Fest before. Cersei? Like, no. I don't know. I, it, it they, were, they were a big band. We probably had them in Harbor Fest. They were yeah. a big they play at the bars during the school year. Uh I can't remember the name though. Anyway. Oh well. I'll think about it. <laughs> I mean, of course, of course, music is is the the big draw at Harbor Fest, but I'm sure a lot of people are, are looking forward to the food and and of course the fireworks. So, uh, I mean, what kind of food is what kind of vendors will be there, and when do those fireworks start, Dan? Actually, the food you you name it, we got whatever kind of food you want. The fireworks are on Saturday night at nine thirty. Okay. Uh, this year we got you know we we try to stress a lot for the kids too, like. Uh, uh, one part of the park is uh, strictly kids, and we got a popular attraction coming this year for the kids. Uh, I've never even heard of them up until now, but it was called Peppa Pig. Never even heard of them, but <laughs> you ask the kids, they know all about it. So. Oh, yeah. Huh. Yeah. Oh, I, I get it. My kids yeah. my kids liked it. <laughs> it tell us about um, the other contributions that are made, you know, besides, like, the big contributions. Like, can people donate money to help help fund Harbor Fest? Do you you know, is it, you know, obviously I'm sure you take donations all around, but, you know, do do just regular Joes donate as well? Oh, yeah, we have individual membership. You know, we put it out on our website. Uh, we pay for anybody, you know, we're always looking for a contribution. And, you know, it's really, you know, really appreciated. And that's what we done. We get people donate up to two or three hundred dollars. And there's probably at least uh, I'd have to say maybe like four or five hundred people. It'll donate that kind of money. And then you have the small businesses that, you know, we have a business membership too for uh, people that can't really do big stuff. Now is, is, they, is, sorry, Chris. I just, just asking in Harbor Fest, is it a 501c3 organization? 
Yeah, it's a five one two three and a five one two four. Okay. I was going to ask where uh, is the website the only place they can go to contribute if someone wanted to go and contribute towards Harbor Fest? Is that the only place they can go? Yeah, the website is the only place right now that you know. But we also we're on uh, you know we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, but mainly you have to go to the website to donate. That's uh, what's the website? It's uh, harborfest.com. Uh, let's step away from Harbor Fest for a second here. Uh, you've been part of the Gosick Racing team up at the Oswego Racetrack for many, many years. How did you get involved in dirt track racing, and and how did you end up on the Gosick Racing team? Well, actually, it's not dirt track; it's pavement. It's pavement, pavement okay. But uh, well, back in 1990, uh, where I lived and where Joe Gosick was at his brother, uh, their their homestead was like two or three blocks from here. Uh, plus, both my kids were really involved with, you know, they liked Joe Gozik. So I started hanging out there and, and you know, what one thing led to another and I started helping them out and I've been helping them out ever since. So, you know, that's how I got to know Eddie fairly well. And we go to the hockey games, all the, me and my wife, you know, season's ticket holders. And, you know, you can't beat going out to the, you know, to the new uh, ice rink out there. I mean, it's, you can go there in shorts in the wintertime. <laughs> Trust racing, so. <laughs> this is true uh and um yeah and i'd say the concessions are miles ahead of what they were in romney weren't they <laughs> romney yeah romney you just had to watch your head that you didn't get to pit in the face or in the yes. <laughs> amen <laughs> exactly we we talked we've talking about we've spoken about that multiple times over the over the course of our of our podcast in in us as we go in the summer Right. Besides, you know, hanging out by by the lake um, is racing the big sport in Oswego during the summer. Obviously, ice hockey is the big sport in the wintertime. But is there is there any is there any other big sports um, besides the the uh, the race? Well, not really big sports, but there's a lot of uh, where people getting out on the water, like with sailboats, uh, kayaking's become a big thing. And, uh, you know, like the marina down there, it's it's. This year, it's fully booked, you know, with just people mm-hmm. with, their, with their boats. I mean, they're good size boats, uh, but like me and myself and my wife, we do a lot of kayak. And they're, that's becoming a big sport. So really, in the summertime, as far as sports per se, is mainly the, uh, the racetrack. How, and Dan, you're uh, a lifelong resident of Oswego. How have you seen, uh, there's been a lot of initiatives recently by the city to improve uh the aesthetics improve downtown you know make it a more viable community uh, how have you seen the city evolve o- over the past you know 10 20 30 years well i could say over the last 10 years eight years so uh, the mayor that we have right now is he's a young mayor uh, mayor billy barlow uh, yeah. he's done a tremendous stuff in the city like as far as Brightback park i mean if you guys went there now in the summertime you wouldn't believe it that's good for you know like what he's done there as far as the landscaping you know people are tons of people are there walking all the time um he's revived you know the uh, revitalization of the city of, of well downtown that's really changed a lot too stores are coming more and more there's becoming more of them and it's starting you know more people are starting to hang out downtown so yeah they they had a um for a little while it's i i, rem- I remember hearing that uh, downtown had like a, a bit of an issue with a lot of stores closing down, if I'm oh, not yeah. mistaken. Yeah. Now it's the other way around. Mm. And are they mostly um, like local shops now or are there any big, bigger stores um, coming in? Company? Well, actually, downtown is all local stores. So as far as big stuff, well, in fact, I mean, it's sorry to say, but like J.C. Penny that was big there, they closed. But now you got other stuff coming in out there, like uh, for Walmart, you know, all those, that kind of stuff. Uh, the nice restaurant being built on Texas Roadhouse is going in there. Um, and then downtown, there's a lot more like, well, they're all local stores that have opened up and, and people are shopping there. I think, I it's, think- you know, it's for the, I think it really, it really looks good downtown. Yeah. The revitalization is great down there. Yep. Well, I think boys will have to take a trip up to a uh, Harbor Fest this year and just check it out for ourselves. <laughs> they should at least come have something to eat. <laughs> I haven't been to Harbor Fest in years. I, I used to come up. I used to come up in the summer. Um, I think I came up 
about four or five summers in a row after starting in from like in my, after my junior year. And uh, used to, I, lo- I used to love coming up for Harbor Fest. Oh, there's one local bar that still does a tremendous business down around Harbor Fest. Right now it's called Gibby's Irish Pub, but it, uh, I'm trying to think it used to be called uh, Northport. And it's now hmm. it's by a local guy. And it's a, it's a, a hot spot. Where is that one? Where is that one located? It's located on uh, West 2nd and uh, Lake Street, right down there by the Coast Guard Station. Okay. What, what's your what's your go-to restaurant at Oswego these days? Um, actually, I'm not, I'm not one for sitting down for a long time in a restaurant. Okay. I like a, like a, well, like a, not really a fast food, but in between, like, there's Azteca. It's a Mexican restaurant over at okay. Um we have Fajita Grill, which is on the uh, west side, and that's a decent place to cook. Uh, of course, you still got Canales Restaurant, the Italian restaurant there. Of course, of course. Uh, those are probably my favorite spots. So no Oswego Sub Shop, huh? You're not going oh, to get no, a cheeseburger no. sub over there? No, we still go get a sub there. There we go. Probably go at least probably once a week and get a roast beef sub. There you oh, go. There you go. What about Garofalo's? Oh, Garofalo's are still operating. They have, uh, in fact, they'll be at the Harbor Fest. They have uh, one over the one at the west side during Harbor Fest. Their stands. Oh, wow. We were just we were just joking before, uh, before we before we started early before you came on that you know we were when we were you know four college students, you went to Garofalo's and you got a a a, yeah. a sub at Garofalo's and that lasted you literally for lunch, dinner, and maybe a like late night snack. It was so big. <laughs> Wasn't at the popular spot for getting your your kegs of beer too. So. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> Sometimes there was there were other places as well, but yes, that was one of those places. <laughs> all right. Well, um, I uh, I think we're we're all looking forward to uh, to it, and and you know the best part is the it, there won't be you know three feet of snow. It'll it'll be uh, nice and sunny for for Harbor Fest. Well, this past winter was a real weird winter. I mean, I don't think we got over. I don't think we had over four feet of snow altogether. Yeah. So that used to be one storm. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it was a pretty mild winter here in Syracuse as well. I don't, yeah. I, we were well, well below average for snowfall yeah. here as well. well. I mean, it's sort of scary. It's like, what's going on? You know, I don't I mean, think I've been three times. Yeah. You know, that's a great point. I, I like to measure it in terms of how many times we've had to fire up the snowblower. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, oh. I think down here in Cortland, it was only, a, I think, a two snowblower winter. And there was like oh. maybe five shovels. <laughs> so, oh. it, was, it is weird. It is weird. Well, yes. By me, I don't think I shoveled once all winter. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, thank you so much uh, for for joining us. Uh, we, we greatly appreciate that. Uh, and, um, you know, looking forward to uh, another great Harbor Fest. So uh, best wishes. And um, I know this is your, again, your first year as executive director, but you've been, you've been volunteering for, you know, over a decade. So you've got this, you've got this, Dan. It's all under control, yeah, right? right? That's what my wife says too. <laughs> <laughs> well, now she, she, yeah, now you get her to help out. Like you were helping her out. Now you get her to right. help you out. Oh, uh, she's helping me. So. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, it's nice to meet all you guys too. Nice Stop, meeting man. you, Dan. Same here, Dan. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you later. Thank you. And that was Dan Harrington, the executive director of Oswego Harbor Fest, uh, which runs Thursday, July 27th through Sunday, July 30th. You can check out their website at oswegoharborfest.com. Uh, just want to clarify, so not harborfest.com, but Oswego Harbor Fest. Dot com And that'll get you there to the uh, festival's website. It's got all kinds of good stuff on there. Uh, the program for this year's event will be posted to the website momentarily. Uh, sometime this month, it'll it'll come out. Uh, and you can find out more about how to contribute, you know, how to become a member of uh, Harbor Fest. And you can make that contribution anytime. I'm glad I'm glad we were able to get Dan on and, and discuss uh, discuss Harbor Fest a little bit, discuss, you know, city of us we go and mm-hmm. it's good to see that uh there's some revitalization going on over there yeah, yeah. i mean it's I, i've driven through downtown us we go on several occasions you know just because i live in syracuse i go up there every now and then uh and to catch hockey games of course but yeah i mean it's definitely changed it's definitely improved as well i mean there's uh 
you know, there's even, I guess you would call it an upscale restaurant downtown Oswego mm-hmm. as well. So uh, definitely on the up and up for sure. I got to tell you that it's great to have, you know, a walkable city where, you know, everything you need is within a couple of blocks of each other. Like I kind of, I have that experience here in Cortland uh, where, I mean, for a while we actually lived right downtown in an apartment. So like everything was literally <laughs> five mm-hmm. minutes, you know, either way down main street. Uh, so, and, and, you know, I kind of like that where you have you know, a lot of local stores that, and that's really one of the great ways you can help benefit the the local economy is, is shop at those stores and, I know you got to go to Walmart at sometimes for to get some things. It's almost yeah. impossible to find yeah. some price chopper or but, tops or yeah. whatever. <laughs> I wonder if tops is still around. Is tops still around there? Uh, they- uh, and I swiggle, I don't know. Um, price chopper, definitely. I think they had to sell because they did that here in Cortland. Uh, we had a tops and a price chopper and then they merged. Mm. So they oh, had to, yeah, they had to spin off the tops, which is now a grand union. So, it's like a really like a central yeah. central New York Grand monopoly. Union. Tops Grand- and Price Chopper merging. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even know Grand Union was still around. I thought they were out. It, they were out and now they're back. They no resurrected kidding. the name. Don't call yeah. it a comeback. Don't, <laughs> don't call it a comeback. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Grand yeah. Union making comebacks. Yeah, a little, little red dot. How about red- that? All right. That's uh, right. Red Dot. Speaking of Red Dots, doesn't Shoprite have a little red dot in, uh, in their logo too? They made a comeback up here. Did they really? Shoprite yeah, up north, right. up really? in uh, up in the Albany area. I know. But they they were around when I was growing up, and and then they, you know, they closed all their stores up in you know the capital district, and now they're back up there. So yeah, that's all we got down here. That's uh, that's, that's our that's our, <laughs> that's our supermarket. Uh, recap for all of New York. <laughs> if, I anyone got, really, if anyone really, really cared about our our supermarket tastes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think p- if, if you're still around, then bless bless you, uh, because right. we're going to talk more about it. Uh, I, <laughs> I uh, what, the A&P was big on Staten Island when I was growing up. Uh, and I, that was Walbaums. That was my first job as a cashier at the A&P that opened up down the road from my I worked house. at Pathmark. Pathmark, see? see rivals we were rival supermarkets <laughs> i'm trying to remember if there was a and p in albany i think there was i want to say there was i don't mm. know i've lost track of all the supermarkets that have come and gone <laughs> but i mean uh, price chopper was like the was the only one that was closest to campus you know because it was in that shopping center right at the right over the bridge yeah right. what, wasn't and there tops a- was all the way down all the way down by walmart so that was like you needed a car to get there. Yeah, <laughs> right. there was a PNC as well, right? That that was a, a supermarket back in the day, PNC, or am I thinking of something different? PNC are... was was a supermarket, but I don't think they were in Oswego, were they? There was one in Oswego. I'm pretty sure it was way. It was like way on the east side, probably. That was on, okay. It was yeah, further down, close maybe to like closer where to Walmart tops. is. Yeah. Or, yeah, 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 that area. There are two PNCs left in in Re- the world. Really? There's one here. In Cortland, and there's one in Ithaca. Look at you. That's a wealth it. of knowledge. In a Ithaca. wealth of knowledge. Because uh PNC went bankrupt. Uh yes. their par- parent company, Pen Traffic, went bankrupt. And the employees bought the Cortland and Ithaca locations, and now they're that's it. They're now PNC fresh. And so they're uh, just kind of independent like supermarkets? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. I did not so, know that. So we're, uh, we're still, we're Cortland's got three plus Walmart, three grocery stores plus Walmart. So you're not gonna, don't find that in many other no, cities up here. Plenty of options. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, Oswego only has price chopper now, right? That's it. So, yeah, and Walmart, Walmart yeah. I guess. I don't know if Walmart is, a, is Walmart is Walmart over there. I mean, when we were there, Walmart wasn't, wasn't a supermarket. Oh, I, no. I think they've changed all of their Walmarts to be super Walmart. So you don't yes. actually have a super Walmart anymore. Like it was a, you know, it was a big deal to go to super yeah. Walmart. Now it's not a big deal. It's just Walmart. Yeah. So Jay, I wanted to revisit something you mentioned during our talk with Dan. You you mentioned something about the guess who. I, I was going to mention this car. as well. Yes. I was going to call about it. No, they're, they're not uh who covered band. 
Jason, they, oh, you know the, the song Gassu American Woman? <laughs> yeah. American Woman. Yeah. yeah. That's the Guess Who. That's their song. That's oh, the really? Gassu. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I thought they were a Who cover band. <laughs> I raised an eyebrow during that. I'm like, is, uh, did I just. I didn't, know, I didn't know that's who sang that song either, to be quite honest with you. What else? Uh, what? <laughs> you learn something new every day, folks. Uh, there's uh, a couple. I guess that's uh, why. I guess that's why Dan was like, "No, they play other." Ah, uh, no, <laughs> no, Jason. <laughs> he was very polite about it. You're not a. You're he listen, was listen, dummy. Yes. Oh God, yeah. He, he just stopped short of calling you an idiot. Like that's what just happened there. Hey, I, I knew who Frankie Valley is at least. I am shocked that Frankie Valley played at Harbor Fest. I wonder. I wonder I grew how up on long Frankie ago that was. Yeah. My parents used to blast that stuff in the car all the time. That must have made amazing car trips. Oh, yeah. It was amazing. Oh. So the Guess Who actually had Randy Bachman on guitar, who would later go on to form Bachman Turner Overdrive and all of all of their stuff. So the Guess Who is, you know, pretty uh, pretty influential, right? They also No Time, No Sugar Tonight. Those are good songs, man. Uh, yeah, yeah. Guess that's who? That's right. Yes. Coming to yes. Oswego, baby. I, I actually don't know that one. Sorry. <laughs> so, Kevin, you're going to Harbor Fest and uh, check out the Guess uh, Who. Huh? Maybe. So, I'm looking nope. up their tour. I'm looking up their latest tour. And it's playing Hammond's Port, New York. I don't know yes. where it is. Finger yeah, Lakes. Uh, Cayuga Finger, Lake. Uh, Warren, Ohio. Saginaw, Michigan. Atlantic City. Ames, Iowa. Hmm. Onamia, Minnesota. Okay. It's a, it's a geography. They're lesson. playing Vegas, though. Vegas? They must have Where? some deal with the Golden Nugget because they're, they're playing at the Golden Nugget in AC. Ooh, they're playing at the, the Golden, Golden Nugget, Nugget in Vegas. Have you yeah. been to the Golden Nugget? I have not. Oh, I mean, I may gotta have. Go to the Golden I may have Nugget. been to the Golden Nugget at some point. It's on the old strip. It's on. It's in downtown Vegas. Oh, you got to go. You got to go to the Golden Nugget. They're playing at the Kodak Center in, in Rochester. Nice. See? They're big. They're still around. They're still hanging around. And then they got a lot of very small venues also that yeah. I don't even know where some of these places are. Like Elkhart, Indiana. Hey, look, you know, it's a paycheck, right? <laughs> look, hey. someone offers you several, a four-figure, five-figure paycheck to come play in Elkhart, wherever, wherever the yeah. heck. I'll yeah, sign I mean, me I'll up. I'll do it. I can't yeah. sing, but I'll do it. <laughs> and they can even mail it in if they want. Yeah, exactly. right. Playing Park City, Utah. That's pretty good. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Who knew? I'll take the yeah. dummy. I'll take the dummy hat for the day. <laughs> it's okay, Jay. It's all right. I was. I see. I was. I was going to be a good teammate, and not say anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> but Kevin had to jump in there and get you. <laughs> I'm That's the okay. jerk. I'm the jerk. <laughs> I'm perfectly okay with that. Okay. <laughs> I'd rather, I'd rather, I, I did. I honestly didn't know. Okay. So. The more you know. Exactly. Although the, the guess who would be an excellent name for a who cover band. Right. That's what I'm yes. saying. See, it right. would be. It'd but be that's really why good. I thought that because I was like, I didn't know who they were. So to me, that I just thought, oh, it's a perfect name. I think. What would be another great name for a Who cover band? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think just say all of them, all the W's. <laughs> there's a there's a cover band actually playing um, at Harbor Fest. I think it's the uh, AC cover band Bonfire. If I've got that mm, correct, really? Yeah, I believe so. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna double check here the because I saw it earlier um, while I was. Uh, doing preparation for the show and of course my computer is going to crash so i will uh I'll let it do its thing <laughs> uh i'm i'm there I'm there yes bon, right. bonfire a tribute bonfire. to acdc nice uh, at 10 o'clock saturday july 29th 10 o'clock 10 o'clock that's way past my bedtime uh, <laughs> i mean if anyone anyone who knows what who acdc is they're in bed by 10 o'clock <laughs> That's true. Although what I will doing? say, I will say that my son likes Metallica and ACDC. Excellent. So maybe that'd be a trip worth taking. Because, you know, he's a teenager. So like he's up at ridiculous hours during summer. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, yeah. So it's just past my bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> well, the uh, Gold Cup is uh, in full force, and we have the U.S. men's national team that has uh, overcome a very close match against the Canadians in penalty kicks uh, and have moved on to the semifinals of the Gold Cup against Panama. Yeah, they they should easily... I want to say easily, but they should easily beat Panama. Mm-mm. It no, won't be. So? It won't be easy. It won't be easy like it wasn't easy with Canada. This see, th- and this is this is what I hate about you know some of the coverage that I see on TV sometimes. Um, and I'd mentioned this over a text to you, Jay, um, and Kevin was in a group text. When they don't do analysis on, Fox, yeah, right, they just like uh, yell. Yeah, I mean, Lalas is out there yelling about. They just need to play better. And it's like, well, duh. <laughs> and, you know, Donovan's over there shaking his head like, yeah, okay, I, I understand. Yes. But tell me, tell me why, tell me right. why their midfield is sucking right now. Yeah. Well, it's pretty easy. They're playing, Canada's playing man to man in a five man midfield. So they had two extra wingers that they, they just surrounded everyone in the midfield. The U.S. kept playing backwards in the first half. I mean, it, it's as that simple as that. It was really nice. Yes, it was. It was very nice. But like that, the one guy, the guy on defense, he did, I felt like he was just like kept backpedaling and backpedaling and backpedaling and like, you know, what to yeah, do. I mean, the, he the, got a piece of it and then it deflected it in the defense struggle last night. That was a real struggle for the U.S. And Miles Robinson to have two handballs. One actually got called. And the the yeah. other, the first point lucky because there was a foul uh, on the Canadian right player. So. I mean, Miles, by the way, is a Syracuse University graduate. And there's two SU graduates in that game last night. I don't know if you guys knew that or not. Miles Robinson and Kamal Miller, the Canadian uh, center back. So uh, it was uh, SU versus SU in the USA versus Canada match last night. But I couldn't believe that. I didn't understand why the the so the guy that kicked the guy that kicked the penalty uh, penalty kick earlier in the game who scored the goal to tie it up. Uh he then was the first first guy in the in penalty in in, in extra in the penalty kicks and he literally went right back down the middle and yeah. the goalie and turner just kind of like moved a little bit but stayed almost in mm. place because he was like i'm pretty sure he's going to like why would you go right back down the middle yeah. again that's the that's the dangerous part if you're if you're taking a penalty kick during the match and then there happens to be a penalty shootout you got to change it up like yeah. i remember messi doing this in, in the world cup like he didn't do the same exact thing. Like he put one down the center, and it's like okay. Then the goalie would go like one direction, and he would totally fool him and go in a right. di- completely different direction. So, yeah, it it penalty kicks are it's it's a it's an art, and also yeah. it's nerve wracking. You oh, know, yeah. like as a penalty kick taker, like it's all the pressure is on you. The goalie is just he's gonna dive one way or another, right. or he's not gonna move, and you're gonna look like it's a his fool, gravy if he doesn't make a save, basically. Yeah. And then yeah, the other so. the, the the US player first one I think was a Vasquez Vasquez I think is the guy who scored the goal for for the US. Yep, that was Vasquez. Yeah, he kicked it over the he kicked it he just shanked it and kicked it over the yeah. net. Yeah, yeah, that was uh so the that penalty kick shootout was a uh, basically a microcosm of how the, <laughs> the game started for the US and also it shows like how nerve wracking it can be like you can. And simply make a mistake and just put it over the bar or get right at the goalie. So yeah, luckily it didn't. It didn't come back to haunt them. Thank because Turner made two saves in a row. Turner was a monster last night. Yep. Well, this is our last podcast uh, before the Women's World Cup uh, begins on July twenty first. So, are we looking at uh, are we are we looking at the U.S. as a prohibitive favorite here, or are they gonna are they gonna really? Yeah have some challenges along the way no they'll have challenges but they're uh they're definitely one of if not the favorite you have us you have germany you have sweden i mean those are probably the big three right now that uh and i'd probably throw the netherlands in there as well, well. Isn't, isn't canada pretty good women Canada's, canadian women's team and the japanese women's team are usually yeah, pretty good yeah right? uh, yeah, they're good but they're 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 like that next tier right so you have the us germany and sweden top tier and then it kind of it kind of goes down before uh after that uh I, so no team in in the world cup or any other tournament for that matter 
Well, man, we'll just stick to the World Cup because I know this to be a fact. Has ever done a three peat, men's or women's. So this will be completely unprecedented, and it's very possible. I mean, the U.S. is is literally the strongest team in the field. Germany, who is probably the second favorite, lost to Zambia in a friendly last week. So, and Zambia is, I mean, they're just an up and coming young team uh, that no one really knows about. And it's probably a dark horse in this tournament. So that'll be an interesting watch. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to come down to the U S and Germany probably uh, is, is my prediction, if you will. Um, and I do think the U S will three peat. Somewhere I re- read, read that um, someone meant someone picked England to be uh, to go to the final they, against the U S. So the English is the fourth team. That's the fourth team. Yeah. So U S Germany, England and Sweden. Those are your top four uh, without question. Uh, yeah. And the English are very good, but I, uh, from what I, I think the U S beat England in the last world cup. And if I recall, uh, that was the, uh, the, the spot of tea celebration uh, that Alex Morgan did during the, uh, oh, yeah, during that, that game. So that was an excellent, excellent celebration. Uh, more, more people should do it if, when they score against yeah. England. <laughs> A big X factor, though, Chris, is is injuries because uh, there have been a handful sure. of U.S. women's players that won't be able to participate because they did suffer yeah. injuries recently. Yeah, I mean Becky Sauerbrunn is not going to be participating in the World Cup this year. She's a she's a veteran. I mean, she's been around for you know several World Cups, and yeah, she will be missed. But there's a lot of young talent. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of young talent on this team. I mean, uh, Rodman's daughter Trinity Rodman. Yeah, Trinity Rodman is really Rodman's good. just fantastic. She scored two. Uh, in the friendly against Wales, yeah. uh, was mm-hmm. it? Yeah, it was Wales yeah, the other Wales, day. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's a young team. So, I mean, you got Rose Lavelle, you still have Alex Morgan, you have Rapino. I mean, that's a, I mean, that's still a is, really good team. Is um, Ertz, Ertz still on the team? Julie Ertz, Ertz is still on the team, I believe. Uh, I think. I don't know, actually. It's a good question. I believe Rapino announced recently that this will be her last uh, yeah. World Cup. Is her last poor couple. She's actually retiring. she's retiring from professional football period after this year. So mm-hmm. after the season is done, World Cup and season is done, she will be done as well. I was trying to look up what the uh the group of death would be this year in for the for the women's. If this was the men's World Cup, the men's group would have a pretty good uh pretty stiff competition considering they'd be with Netherlands and Portugal. But I don't think the women's Portuguese and uh Netherlands teams are as good as the men's. Well, the Netherlands made it to the World Cup against the U.S. the last World Cup. So that's uh, that certainly is going to be a, a, a big matchup. Portugal, yeah, I mean, probably not going to be too challenging for the U.S. I, I think the U.S. is going to win their group. And, and like I said, I think they're going to go on win the World Cup. All right, you heard it here. It's an official, Put your money down, folks. Chris, Chris Douglas says it right. all. I'm wondering what the what the betting odds are for, uh, for that. They must be uh, probably plus, what, 200? I don't know. Let's find out. For the for the U.S. or in general, the U.S. Yeah, talking World Cup gambling on throwing <laughs> bagels. I bet you it would be, be more than that. I think they'd be they'd be a even a higher favorite than that. U.S. is plus two fifty. There it is. I said two hundred, and then England after that. At yeah, plus four four. Yeah, Spain at plus six hundred. That oh well, yeah. I mean, they have one of the one of the best players in the world. Patelis, the Barcelona star. Yeah, I mean, that's, there's no question. They're they're going to be a team to, that's going to be a challenge for sure. Look, uh, I'm going to put some money down on the Philippines at four hundred thousand. And uh... <laughs> <laughs> there's still there's still some uh, some some veterans on this team though. Looking at the roster, you got Crystal Dunn, yep. Kelly O'Hara, Julie Ertz. I mean, Lindsay yeah. Horan's been around for a decent amount of time already. So is Rose Lavelle. They're young, but they've been yes. they've been around for a while. So I would and Chris Christy Mewis, like I'd consider mm-hmm. all of them veterans, even though they're pretty young for the most part, right? Like, yeah, for sure, yeah, um, for sure. Yeah, uh, I mean, besides it, Alex Morgan and Rapino, you know, it, it it's a good mix. It, it's a it's I think it's the right mix. You know, you, you have your veterans and you have your your young stars. It's not unlike the men's team where. Well, I, I shouldn't say that because the men's team was, was the youngest uh, team at the World Cup uh, in 22. So, um, and this women's team is not the youngest, but it's got a good mix. It's got a great core, 
core of veterans and it's got a, a great young core as well. So yeah, I, I really do. I don't I don't see anyone beating them. I, I mean, if if Germany's gonna lose a friendly to Zambia, who is like, you know, ten thousand to one to win a a, a match, mm-hmm. you know, I I I can't see the US losing to that. I, I can't see, I can see the US losing to maybe England. Maybe the best that's, that's gonna be their their toughest opponent if they if they actually meet. I think the women uh, they do it again. Uh, and I'm, I'm curious celebrate. though, if you know, like I think I think Sauerbrunn injury is actually pretty big. You know, coming from someone coming from someone who's somewhat of a novice, like I I you know she's been around for so long. You know, she, her and O'Hara are like stalwarts in that in that you know for the defense. I would think that she's a pretty big loss. Yeah, I mean, she'll be missed. There's no question because you you know there's there's a lot of intangibles too. I mean, there's that locker room presence that she has, right. where you know make up for that, um, and that's where the Rapinos and the Morgans step up in that situation. So, but yeah, I mean, will she be missed on the field as well? Of course, her leadership on the field is is exceptional, and it, it cannot be overlooked. Uh, but I think the talent that the U.S. has will make up for that. And is Rapino even starting much anymore? She, probably, she's been no, coming off the bench not. mostly, yeah. right? She's been yeah, coming she'll off be the coming bench. off the bench. Yeah, she'll she'll be a, like a thirty minute player, um, and and she'll have a great impact, uh, yeah. even though she'll just play that short tournament. She might get the odd start, maybe against you know, uh, in the third match if it's uh, if it's a match that they don't necessarily need to get a point in. She she might get sixty minutes in that match, but yeah, a little she's, starter against Vietnam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. Uh, it's most likely that's usually how it happens. So, yeah, that's the first match. So, I mean, I, I, I would, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to say for sure, but you know, the odds of losing to Vietnam are are pretty slim. They'll they'll probably win that four, five, six, nothing. They won a couple last World Cup, I think, by like double digits. I remember, uh, like they scored yeah, like one match, one match they, they scored like twelve goals. I want to mm. say, yeah, <laughs> something like that. I just I remember that. I was like, oh my god. That's a soccer match. Like, what, was the other team playing? <laughs> yeah, I, I think it was, I, God, I can't remember who it was, but it was like it was like their first World Cup, and obviously yeah. they were very inexperienced. And you know the resources the resources that women have uh, here in the United States for soccer far outweigh what has what the rest of the world has had. Uh, maybe with the exception of the Norways and the Swedens and and the Germans, of course, and, and now the English, but. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're still miles ahead, but that gap is closing really quick, really quick. Yeah, I mean, I remember a few years ago seeing the U.S. in a a match against Canada. Mm-hmm. The, was it the? It wasn't the World Cup, but against Canada, and they lost. But they actually, I think they did lose to Canada in the Olympics, if I'm not mistaken. Recently, I don't remember within the last few olympics it's possible yeah i don't remember but it's possible yeah i mean yeah even canada's caught up i think we need to hire a suny as we go intern to do our research for us when we're when we're on the podcast we need someone to like do internet searches because while we're (laughs) when we're doing it we're like taking ourselves out of the out of the conversation right so exactly (laughs) yeah all right guys i think that'll do it for this edition of the throwing bagels podcast uh, we will uh, talk again in a couple of weeks, man. It's already by the time we talk next, it'll be late July. Wow, where is the time going? Where it's is crazy. It? I feel like we just started this podcast. By. I know, seriously. seriously. Thanks again to Dan Harrington, the executive director of uh, Swego Harbor Fest, for joining us uh, to talk about the big annual event in the Port City. Uh, and you can again check out their website at SwegoHarborFest.com. We'll put the link up on our blog or on our website uh, right next to this very podcast. Uh, And you can uh, visit us online, throwingbagels.com and uh, check us out, check out our social media pages from our website. And you can email us throwingbagelspodcast at gmail.com. And uh, I think it's my turn to do a blog. So that should be coming your way on Monday, on Monday, this coming Monday. Don't know what it's going to be about, but (laughs) <laughs> so just man, whatever. I have wing no it. idea. Just wing it. Wing it. I yeah. So it'll be a surprise for everyone. So ooh, uh, ooh, I like surprises. Nice. Guys. So until next time, Jason. Take care, Kevin. Chris. So, All right, Kevin. Jay. Wonderful. 